I'm Keith Jewell, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Detective Comics 979. Despite his objection, will Tim Drake ultimately be the thing that spells the end for the Bat Family? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. So, picking up from where the last issue left off, Tim Drake was forcibly being assimilated into the OMAC hive mind. Well, there, the general plays him several very disturbing simulations of possible futures. Cassandra Kane joining the League of Assassins, Azrael clones killing the original Luke Fox dying because of his work with the colony. All very disturbing stuff and stuff that the General says could very well happen if Tim Drake does not choose to act. Now, all throughout the city, the Bat Family is forced to duke it out with these OMAC soldiers. They're incredibly powerful, but they are not completely invincible. It's Luke Fox who actually gets to show off his big brain as Batwing saying that the things are covered in nanobots and that if you disrupt them, you disrupt the whole hive mind. Now, Jacob Kane is quick to point fingers. I mean, what else is new? But Batman points them right back, saying that these Omax were his soldiers and that this is no doubt the work of Brother Eye. Which sadly means poor Tim Drake is once again at the epicenter of everything. Now, desperately, the general attempts to get Robin to join him on the dark side, and when that fails, he decides, hey, you know what? I have caught copies of your brain from the future if you won't willingly turn to the dark side and become your evil self from the Titans of Tomorrow future. Ah, I'll just overwrite your head and force you to become that person you've been fighting not to become. This leads to one hell of a terrifying transformation as Tim Drake Robin evolves into, well, Omac Batman, Obacman, if you will. Before he loses his mind fully completely, though, he does manage to warn Cassandra Kane about what the general is planning and hopefully how he might be able to stop him. It's actually a really cool scene. Tim doesn't have use of his voice right now, but because Cass can read body language, she can actually hear his cry for help the way no one else would be able to. Batman eventually surmises that if this is part of evil Tim's future plan, then the Belfry is no doubt going to be at the epicenter of all of it before Tim decided he was going to mend his ways, even he was talking about building it bigger and better than ever before. And indeed, as the comic begins to wind down, all of the OMAC bots descend upon the Belfry, joining together into one giant massive brother eye citadel in the middle of Gotham. And that right there is where the comic comes to a close, everybody, so that was Detective Comics, and once again, this issue completely threw me for a loop. I thought I knew where it was going, but I actually had no idea. I kinda dig this idea time is playing with that Tim Drake was one of the big reasons this team came together, one of the big reasons it almost fell apart, and now Tim Drake, under control of the General and OMAC, might actually be the team's most deadly foe to date. I'm also actually filled with a lot of fear for the character's well-being, as Batman seems to imply in this issue it's going to be hard to remove Tim from the OMAX without killing him, and as if you may have noticed from the solicitations, there's no Tim Drake Robin in any of them for the next couple months. It's going to be sad to see Tynan have to close shop up on this book soon, especially because he seems to have been writing one hell of an epic from the beginning to right here and now. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one another 8 out of 10, another solid issue. So that's Detective Comics, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other things I've been working on. Then you can follow me on social media, at Cape Jewel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, please check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And until next time, everyone, this has been Gabe Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.